Hey everybody, I am excited to share a card with you. I am featuring some stamps from AB Studio. If you are not familiar with AB Studio, Aga is the owner and she designs a lot of the stamps, stencils, paper collections, that sort of thing. So be sure to check out the website. It will be listed down below as well as all of the supplies that I will be using today. I will try and um, be sure to list the stamps that I used specifically. Uh, they are gorgeous florals and the, she has some of the most beautiful stamps, stencils, papers, and everything is such high quality. I highly recommend um, trying to see if you can find something for, on her website that you want because it, they're just amazing products and she is just the sweetest person ever. All right. So I am going to start off by placing my three stamps on the stamp platform and I am using the stamp platform so that I can stamp in Versamark twice on some watercolor paper. I like to stamp twice when I'm using watercolor paper, especially with Versamark ink because the watercolor paper obviously will kind of absorb some of that ink so I want to make sure that I'm getting a nice crisp image and I use this static or anti-static tool by EK success honestly you could just use cornstarch what is in here is actually baby powder and so you definitely don't have to um, invest in you know a fancy tool I had no idea it was just baby powder when I had got it um, but I am just using it up because I have it. All right, so like I said, I stamped twice with Versamark ink, and now I am going to use some super fine gold embossing powder from Ranger. I absolutely love this color. Uh, some golds are just a little bit too gold. This is more like a like an antique gold. Um, it's really pretty, and I did stamp um, them out a few times, the stamps, uh, just so that I had an option of how many I wanted to use on my card. So I've shared quite a few times how to color um, images using Zig markers. And I will have a card up in the right hand corner so that you guys can see all of the videos. I go into depth on my process and what I do differently maybe from what you've tried or what other people do. Um, but I'll just share briefly, um, but I do speed it up quite a bit in just a second because um, I've done this so many times. So what I do is I lay down a layer of water on one or two petals, depending on how big the petals are. Then what I do is I go in to the crease of the floral image in this case, where it would be the most dark. So I'm wanting to get a lot of depth in, um, on the floral image. And then I'll go back in with my watercolor brush. In this case, I'm using an Arteza watercolor brush. I really like these. Uh, they're really easy to use. I don't find that they leak uh, unless I squeeze it really hard. Um, but as you could see, I have a uh, scratch paper on the side here. Um, that is because the zig markers are water-based, so when I'm adding it to a petal with water on it, it um, uh, the color uh, kind of goes away from the tip of the marker, if that makes sense. So I have to kind of pull back that color onto the tip of the marker. Um, and then let's see. So what I do is I use a pouncing motion a lot of times when I am coloring um, and pulling that color out into the petal instead of a stroke, which a lot of people use. Um, I find that it blends it a little bit better, especially when I'm going back in um, to the petal and uh, it just it's worked for me and I also use a circular motion um, that really helps as well and let's see um, I think using a water brush for this really helps uh, because you don't have to continue to dip your 
brush into water um, and you just have the water right there on hand. And this is a smaller um, round brush that Arteza has. I think they come, I think these brushes come in a pack of six. So there's three flat brushes and three round brushes, uh, different sizes. I do have a little pool of water to the left there on my mat. Um, that's just in case I need just a tiny bit extra water on my brush. So I actually uh, color three of the flowers. I'm not going to bore you with doing that, um, but I'm going to move on to the next step, which is embossing this wood veneer piece from Altenew. I absolutely love their wood veneers. They come really sticky on the back and they come on a clear sheet. Uh, this one has been off of the clear sheet for quite some time um, or what I've done in the past is just directly put the embossing powder onto the back side of the wood veneer piece. Um, it's worked very well in the past, but this time I used Versamark ink and heat embossed it with some Tonic Studios White Blizzard uh, embossing powder. All right, so here I am doing something a little bit different. I'm using one of the AB Studio stencils and dry embossing with it. I could not find my embossing mat to save my life. Um, recently, my mother-in-law came for Thanksgiving, so I kind of just shoved a bunch of stuff everywhere so that she can sleep in my craft room and have her own space. So I couldn't find it anywhere. So what I did was I took some fun foam and in replace of the uh, uh, the embossing mat, and it, it actually worked and I was really surprised. I was like, oh, is this gonna work? I don't know. Um, it doesn't give a really deep impression as if you were using a embossing folder, but it's definitely another way to use up your supplies in a different way and get more use out of um, different supplies. And I do have a video on um, embossing as well, dry embossing or way, different ways to use stencils. So I will have that linked in the upper right hand corner for you guys, or you can just search it on my channel. Um, and all right, so I took a strip of glitter paper and cut it down and I did cut that panel that I embossed on so that it has a nice edge around um, the card base. And then I popped it up with some fun foam just to give it a little bit more dimension. And now I'm just kind of placing everything everywhere. And let's see, I tucked um, behind the wood veneer piece two of the florals, the larger one and then one of the smaller ones. And then I'm going to place one of the smaller ones on top of the wood veneer piece. I also place some upholstery thread underneath that flower image um, and I did fussy cut out the, flo the flowers by hand. I don't believe that there is dyes, um, but they're really easy to cut out. So I wanted to use a die set from Concord and Ninth and it says Beautiful You. I wanted the YOU to have a little bit of character, but I didn't want it to be the exact color of the flowers, like solid, a solid color. So I kind of did an ombre effect on that and then I die cut out the YOU and it's so small, but I'm using my jewel picker to um, pick up those little pieces and I'm using some Gina K glue, connect glue, uh, really works really well for small, um, items to glue down like sequins or smaller die cuts. And I end up die cutting out the beautiful uh, in the glitter paper as well as some watercolor paper. I thought the watercolor paper just gave the sentiment like this like natural feel instead of regular cardstock. It's just something different, a uh, different kind of texture. And I layer that um, kind of offset a little bit um, onto the glitter paper. I thought that the beautiful needed to stand out a little bit more, so that's why I ended up um, going with the white 
because of the flowers they are um, this turquoise oh I didn't even tell you what color it is Persian green from the zig clean color real brush markers and to finish the card I did add some nouveau crystal drops in simply white just to add a little bit more interest and that is going to complete this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you are new to my channel, I hope you subscribe. And also leave me a comment down below. And I want to thank you guys again for watching. And I'll catch you guys later. Bye.